everybody, it's Mrs Holland here again for a little bit of art. Um, we have done some quite amazing things over this term and I have to say that I have loved it. I have loved doing the pencil drawing with you and the really accurate highlighting and shading and cross hatching and all that stuff. I've really, really enjoyed doing that with you. Um, and some of the things that have been produced are amazing. Last week I was in school and we drew the birds inspired by Darwin's finches. And they were amazing. Honestly, they were absolutely brilliant what people had drawn. And, and I know that some of you have done that at home as well. So well done. Your drawing skills are, oh, they're amazing. So today we're going to do a, a similar thing. We've drawn plants, we've drawn birds, and I thought today we would think about insects. But I'm not going to do like a drawing tutorial with you. I'm going to leave it to you to draw or paint or create whatever you want to do, an insect. And it got me thinking a little bit when I was thinking about, oh, we could do it with different media, not just a pencil. We're all in different situations, aren't we? Some of us are at school and we can get to paint, we can get to oil pastels, we can get to normal pastels, we can get to charcoal, we can do watercolours, we can get access to loads of stuff. Whereas at home, we don't always have those things. And most of us have a pencil, but, um, you know, we don't all have oil pastels at home. I've got some oil pastels, but you might not have, um, you might have pencil cranes. So there's, there's loads of things that you can use. So, so I thought we would do a bit of an experiment. Um, and I would like you to produce a picture of an insect using whatever media you want, okay? And I thought I might have a little bit of fun just doing a bit of experimenting with colour and with media. So when people like Charles Darwin and Sir Joseph Banks and Margaret Mee were doing their exploring, there was lots of different ways that they could make colour, but for some, not as many as others. Margaret Mee had access to gouache and lots of different types of paint, but the older, the, the further away the explorers were, the longer time ago it was, the less chance they had of picking up a tube of poster paint, they had to work out how to make some of these colours. And sometimes all they had was the natural environment to try and create colour. So I thought I would use my natural environment, which is my house. And I thought I would have a little bit of a rummage through my cupboards and the fridge and see if I could find things that I could actually use to make colour and to kind of paint with. Um, and then I, I might think about using some of those on my insect, but I won't, I'm not going to do that with you because I want you guys to just explore that however you want to do it. But I thought it might be fun for us to just explore whether some of these things that are all around our house actually can be used to make colours. Um, if you're at school, you probably won't have the access to a spice cupboard like we might do at home. And if you're at home, I want you to make sure you ask your grown up before you go rummaging around in anything, getting out things that you might not be allowed to, or trying to paint with something that actually might be for your tea. So, I've had a rummage, and these are the things that I've found. So I've got some tomato ketchup, I've got some blueberries, gravy granules, um, peas, frozen peas, petit pois, they're called. Um, I've got some coffee. And then I went in my spice drawer and I've got something called turmeric. Now, turmeric, I know for sure, can be used for tie-dyeing. In fact, it's very similar to the colour of my T-shirt. It can be used for tie-dyeing, so I'm imagining that this might be quite a good one to make colour with. And then I've got the, the curry powder as well. Let's see what that does. <coughs> so, I'm going to start with a bit of tomato ketchup and let's just see whether you can paint with it and what kind of colour it makes. So let's squeeze a bit of that out. Oh my goodness me! That tomato ketchup is not red. It's actually brown. So I'm going to see what it's like and dip my paintbrush in it. Just pretend it's paint. And just do a little blob of it on my my piece of paper here. Oh, it kind of paints like it kind of paints like a watercolor. It's not um, it's not a very strong color. Can you just see that there? 
it's not a very strong colour, it's almost like watercolour, but quite an interesting brown might be useful for an insect, so I'll put that to one side. What else have I got? Oh, I know what I did. I got some blueberries and I cooked them in the microwave just to see if all the colour would come out. And look at that. So I'm going to see if I can paint with blueberries. I might need, I'm going to just rinse my paintbrush, I might need a little bit of water in there with them. Let's see if I can mush them up a bit more and see if they paint as well. Oh, wow. That makes a brilliant colour. Again, it's a bit more like a watercolour. It's not a it's not a block colour, but look at that. Look how bright that is. And that's just my blueberries. Wow. Amazing. Into my book. Let's do the peas. I cooked the peas as well. I cooked them for a few minutes until they're a bit mushy and a bit squashy, but I'm not very hopeful with these. They don't I think I might need to mush them a bit more than what I have done. Oh, let's try. Mushy, 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 and then I'll get my paintbrush and just see if anything. Let's see if I can get a, maybe get a bit of pee on it. Oh, I've got a bit of pee on my paintbrush. Let's see what happens. Ah, not much with that one, to be honest. A little bit of a green tint. I'll take the bits of pee out of it. It's got a tiny, tiny tiny bit of a green tint but actually that could be quite a useful colour if I was painting an insect it could be the kind of grasshopper colour or maybe even part of a stick insect maybe with my tomato ketchup so I've got my ketchup blueberries peas it's quite amazing really I'm creating a colour palette out of just what we've got in the house so for the others I've got a little bit of warm water because Usually all of these, you, you well, with coffee, for example, let's do coffee. You obviously put hot water in it, don't you? And, and without the hot water, it's just a powder. So I'm going to get a spoon of coffee. Oh, that smells good. Get a bit of coffee and mix it in to my bit of water. That's going to be quite a rich brown, that has. Get my paintbrush. Oh, look at that. Paint that on, put it next to my tomato ketchup. Oh, that's quite different to the tomato ketchup. It's a much smoother finish and it smells nicer too. That's a really interesting colour that is. That's kind of like a woodlouse or a stick insect colour. Look at that one. Can you see that? It's a it's a better brown than the tomato ketchup. I wonder if your tomato ketchup might actually be more red than mine. So that's the that's the brown. Um, that's the brown for the coffee. Let's try the brown of the gravy. See if it's any darker than the than the coffee. Oh, there's so many smells in, at my table at the moment. Smells like a roast dinner mixed with a coffee afterwards and maybe blueberry pie for pudding. Okay, so there's that's my gravy granules. It doesn't actually look quite as good a colour as the coffee. Let's try it. Oh, similar, but no, it's much lighter. Again, quite a watery, quite a watery texture. A little bit different, not as dark. You could be useful. Okay, what am I on now? Let's do the turmeric, shall we? I like to do the turmeric. And we'll just get a little bit of turmeric in, in the hot water. Oh yes! Wow, that is a really, really bright and vibrant yellow. Look at that. Look, I'm gonna try Going with that, I guess, I guess as well, if you were experimenting, maybe I put too much water in these. Perhaps you could just add a little bit of water and so it makes more of a paste instead of being so, so runny. Well, this one's quite gritty. I think it's because the actual, the actual spice hasn't quite dissolved yet, but I can see that if I was gonna build that up, 
that is a really really lovely yellow look oh god can you see because of the light the light's a bit the light's not helping me there we go there's the yellow look look at that and i've just made all of these colors with things from the house i'm going to do the curry sauce last one on the curry sauce uh, curry powder i mean not curry sauce curry powder Now that's a bit of a different colour. It's not as yellow, that's for sure. Still looks quite, maybe it's, it's an orangey brown. Look, an orangey brown there. Oh yeah, that's, you could kind of build that up again. It's a bit watery. I think I've, I think I've put too much water in that, to be honest. But there you go. That's my, that's my curry powder. Look at the colour that my blueberries have dried. Isn't that the most amazing purple? You could maybe use red cabbage for that or even green cabbage. Try green cabbage, we'll see what colour that comes out with. Maybe you could find some bits in the garden like, um, I don't know, dandelions or grass or something like that. See if you can make a green. But how amazing that I've just created a whole colour palette of kind of homemade paints really. And I might use some of these to do my insect. Um, if you remember last week, we printed off some pictures of birds, didn't we? And I would say to you again, do the same this time. Find a picture of an insect that you want to paint or draw or use whatever media you want, use your oil pastels, whatever. And then, and then use that picture, use the same technique that we did by looking at it and seeing the more simple shapes, see what circles you can see. Um, see if there's like a, a longer shape in it for, for a body or whether you need it to look like a mini snowman again or whatever. Look at the simple shapes as your starting point and do that in a really, really fine pencil so that you can rub that out. But really, this one today is our last art session this term and it's just about having fun. So explore your media, see if you can produce an insect and I can't wait to see what you've done and remember if you do some of this experimenting at home ask permission and tidy up see you soon bye